So, we've come to the end of Chapter 4. All this quadratic work we've been doing has finally come to a culmination. Now it's time to put all of this information we've been working with to practical use in the form of, that's right, your favorite, word problems. Real-life examples where we can put the quadratic formula to actual practice. If you remember back in Section 4.5, we used the formula here h equals negative 16t squared plus h naught. This formula was used to model an object drop from a certain height, initial height, h naught, after a certain amount of time, t. And the h here would be that object's height after a certain amount of time it has dropped from the initial height, where the negative 16 stands for the effect of gravity on an object coming towards the center of the Earth. Now, when we talk about objects that are launched or thrown in a direction other than just dropped vertically down, we introduce the term v naught times time. v naught has to do with an object's initial velocity. Now, if you look closely at this equation here, h equals negative 16t squared plus v naught times time plus h naught. This is actually in standard form. This is a quadratic in standard form. So if we want to know how long it takes an object to hit the ground, our final height here would be zero. And our a term, our quadratic term, would be negative 16. Our linear term would be v naught, And our constant term would be h naught. So while once we identify all three of those values, all we need to do is plug them right into the quadratic formula. Now, as you can see in these three pictures below here, one, two, three, we have three different types of velocity being applied to different types of objects. Now, this is going to change our equation around because in one case, our velocity here is positive. In one case, our velocity is negative. In the last case, our velocity equals zero. Now, in each of these cases, let's think about what the path of each of these objects looks like once it is affected with a certain amount of force. Let's just shrink this down real quick. Uh, let's think about the first one here. The golf ball is being struck by the golf club. So it starts at the ground, and then it goes to a certain height, and it reaches a certain maximum point here, and then it starts coming back down until it hits the ground again. So this is going to be the shape of a, that's right, a parabola. So the path of the golf ball looks like a parabola. Now the equation here is negative 16t squared, so obviously this parabola is going to open down because our a value in our quadratic equation here is negative. Now if we think about the second situation with the volleyball, at some height, let's say there's a volleyball up here, and this volleyball is being hit with some amount of force going towards the ground. So it starts in the air, and it's being hit towards the ground here. So this is kind of like half of the golf ball problem. When we take a look at the third picture, there's an arrow being released from a bow. So let's say our bow is here. There's a little bow. we got a little arrow in there. Now when we launch the arrow, it's going to start at some point right here. And then it's going to go forward, but as it goes forward, it's going to slowly approach the ground here and hit the ground at some point. So this is also, similar to the volleyball, a half a parabola, but this is more of a gradual decrease as it hits the ground, whereas the volleyball is being forced towards the ground rather quickly. Now let's think about all three of these pictures for a second. In the first picture here, we have a golf ball that's being hit from the ground into the air and then back down to the ground. Now, it says here that v naught is positive, so what that means is we're starting with some positive initial velocity. So the velocity is starting at the ground and it's positively being hit away from the ground to a certain height and then gravity kicks in somewhere up here and then the ball comes back down to the ground. Now in the second case with the volleyball, velocity is negative. So just like gravity acts on the, vo the golf ball here, gravity is also acting on the volleyball here, but there's a force being applied to it. So it hits the ground much faster than just gravity acting on the golf ball after the force is applied to it. 
And if we think about the arrow here, this is being launched parallel to the ground. So there's some force going this way, but once it's released, the only thing that's pulling it to the ground is gravity here. There's no extra force being applied to it because it's being shot straight forward. You might also notice that if V0 equals 0 here, this equation right here, if V0 is 0, then this whole linear term right there just disappears and we're just dealing with a dropped problem just like we did in section 4.5. Let's try a practice problem now. This one has to do with juggling. A juggler tosses a ball into the air. The ball leaves the juggler's hand four feet above the ground and has an initial vertical velocity of 40 feet per second. The juggler catches the ball when it falls back to a height of three feet. How long is the ball in the air? So first things first, let's write down the equation we need to deal with launched or thrown objects. Our equation is h equals negative 16 t squared plus v naught times time plus h naught. So that's our equation. Now what we need to do is pull as much information as we possibly can from the couple sentences that are this problem. So if we pick apart each sentence piece by piece, the first sentence says the ball leaves the juggler's hand four feet above the ground. So that's a key piece of information. If the ball leaves the juggler's hand at four feet above the ground, that is our initial height. So our h naught value is going to be 4 feet. Now the following part of that sentence says that it has an initial vertical velocity of 40 feet per second. Vertical velocity, initial vertical velocity, is our v-naught value. So our v-naught equals 40 feet per second. Now the last part of this problem says that the juggler catches the ball when it falls back to a height of 3 feet. The two key words in this sentence are catches and falls back. That implies that we're dealing with the end of this problem at our final height. So our h here, our final height, is 3 feet. So now we have all of our values and we need to solve for time. The question is asking how long is the ball in the air? So we need to figure out what is our t value in this problem. Let's plug all these numbers in and get a quadratic and see what we can do with it. Why don't you press pause and plug all these numbers in and see what you get. There's what I got once I substituted all my values in there. So this almost looks like a quadratic, but we got this 3 over here that we need to move to the right side of that equal sign to put this into standard form. So let's just go ahead and subtract 3 from both sides so we can apply the quadratic formula. We get a 0 on the left here, and we get a negative 16t squared plus 40t plus 1. Now we got this in standard form, and we can identify our three values, right? We have our a value is equal to negative 16, our b value is equal to 40, and our c value is equal to 1. So now let's use the quadratic formula. Substituting all of our values into the quadratic formula here, we get t is equal to negative 40 plus or minus the square root of 40 squared minus 4 times negative 16 times 1 all over 2 times negative 16. After a little bit of algebra, we get 2. t is equal to negative 40 plus or minus the square root of 16, 64 all over negative 32. Now this is one of the few cases where I would say it's totally okay to use decimals. In the context of this problem we're talking about time. And this number here underneath our radical is pretty big so rather than try and factor that down let's just go ahead and take all of these numbers and plug them right into our calculator and see what kind of decimal answers we come up with. Go ahead and plug these in your calculator and see what you come up with. So after doing some quick computations, I came up with t equal to negative 0.025 and 2.5. Now in this problem, we're talking about time. 
So we have two answers here, negative 0.025 and 2.5. And we cannot have negative time. So this answer goes out the window. So our final answer here is 2.5 seconds. So this problem is asking how long it takes for the ball in the air to come back to the juggler's hand. After the juggler throws the ball from his hand at an initial height of 4 feet above the ground, with an initial vertical velocity of 40 feet per second, after 2.5 seconds he will catch the ball in his hand at a height of 3 feet. How about we throw some sports in the mix now? Let's try a football problem. In a football game, a defensive player jumps up to block a pass by the opposing team's quarterback. The player bats the ball downward with his hands at an initial velocity of negative 50 feet per second when the ball is 7 feet above the ground. How long do the defensive player's teammates have to intercept the ball before it hits the ground? This is a good one if you're a football fan. Press pause, try it out, and see what you get. So as we pull all the pieces of information that we can from this problem, we get an initial velocity of negative 50 feet per second, an initial height of 7 feet per second, and we want to know how long it takes. How long do the defensive players have to intercept the ball before it hits the ground? And the ground is the key word there. So our ending height here, we want to know when h equals 0. So after plugging everything in, we get 0 equals negative 16t squared plus negative 50t plus 7. Notice here that our V-naught value is negative 50 feet per second. Negative here, which means it's less than zero. So this is a problem like we talked about in the beginning, like the volleyball problem. So this means that this object has some extra force being applied to it on top of gravity as it approaches the ground. So it's going to hit the ground much quicker than an object that was dropped from some initial height or an object that was launched forward parallel to the ground. Take a second here and identify all of your a, b, and c values from this quadratic equation. Go ahead and plug them into the quadratic formula and let's solve this guy. Press pause. Now using the quadratic formula again, we identify our a, b, and c values as negative 16, negative 50, and 7. Once everything's all plugged in, this is what your quadratic equation should look like. Go ahead and take a second and plug all this into your calculator and come up with an answer. Press pause. After some quick calculating, I came up with t equal to 0.134 and negative 3.259. Now again, we're talking about time here, so our negative answer makes no sense. Now let's think about our positive answer, right, in the context of this problem, right? Somebody in a football game, you know, if a kicker goes to punt the ball, somebody jumps to block the punt, and they smack the, smack the ball back towards the ground. Does this number here, 0.134 seconds, make sense? It sounds pretty logical to me. You know, if somebody's hitting a ball towards the ground, it should take a fraction of a second for that ball to hit the ground. So, in the context of this problem, this sounds pretty good. Here's a nice homework problem for you guys to try out. This involves a guy on a dirt bike, a stunt motorcyclist. He makes a jump from one ramp 20 feet off the ground to another ramp 20 feet off the ground. The jump can be modeled by this equation right here, y equals negative... 1 over 640x squared plus 1 fourth x plus 20, where x is the horizontal distance and y is the height above the ground, all in feet. So give this one a shot. We're looking for four different answers here. This is a multi-step problem. We want to know the motorcycle's height r when it lands on the ramp on the opposite side here. We want to know the length of d, this line right on the bottom, which is the length between the two ramps. We want to know the horizontal distance h the motorcycle has traveled when it reaches its maximum height. So this length from when it leaves the ramp to this line right here, which looks like it's, that's right, the axis of symmetry. So the point at which the motorcyclist reaches his maximum height would be the vertex of this parabola. So that's a little hint for that part. 
And the last question is, what is the motorcyclist's maximum height K above the ground? Which I just said would be the point at which is the vertex. Give this one a shot, and we will go over this one in class.